Lads, welcome back to Fusion YGO. Over the past couple of days, I have had a poll up on the community tab as well as talking about it in our Discord. Link for the Discord is down below. And uh, we are going to do a tier list for every TCG exclusive archetype. There's 21, I think, of them uh, in total. I, I, I did the thing earlier, so, you know. So we're going to go ahead and dive right in. To today's tier list but before we do make sure you like and subscribe if you like this kind of content let's get into it okay so starting off with ashen one of the newest tcg exclusive archetypes uh ashen is a very interesting strategy now it's not super strong i would say that it's got some real competitive uses but it's not something that's seen a lot of competitive success uh, mostly because Snake Eye and Ubel are just two decks that it can't really compete with. However, um, it's super neat and can do a lot of really cool things. And I think B is very solid. I don't think it's absolutely terrible, uh, but I do think that it is um, very. It, it has potential. Next up is going to be the Danger Archetype, and a lot of people forget that this is a TCG exclusive. I did too. However, this. Archetype saw a lot of play as an engine inside of Danger Thunder. Uh, it was part of Orcist. It has been a part of a lot of different combo decks, including the Danger Dark World FTK strategy and Slash Draw FTK. So Danger just saw a lot of competitive success initially on release, and some of their cards are still seeing play today. Um, like Jackalope and Suchinoko see play in things like Phantom Knights and BA. So... Uh, yeah, Danger is definitely an S-tier strategy, has a lot of competitive success, uh, it is very neat. F.A. Look, F.A. has had a long history, um, and with that, it's it's a C-tier. It's got certain cards that see a lot of play, but honestly, it's a C-tier. Um, I don't think anybody's going to argue with F.A., and U.A. is going to be in the same boat. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and skip ahead and hit there. U.A. is all right but it's b is for decks that either a haven't had enough time or b are just not finished yet and that's where ash is at b trooper uh b trooper is honestly so b trooper is a b tier um it saw some competitive success but it wasn't an upper echelon deck and i don't think it ever got any tops if it did it was very few yeah this deck was very very it's very fun, uh, but it has a lot of susceptibility. And when it came out, Nibiru was prevalent, so... Kaijus. Yes, Kaijus were a TCG exclusive. These saw immediate use in side decks. Uh, they deal with towers and things like that, being able to be summoned. So Kaijus, I'm going to put in... But as a deck, they weren't really one, so we're going to put them in A. Um, there's no real strategy with them as individual cards outside of side deck. Um, but it's a really cool strategy. It just, it, it's better as side deck options. So I'm going to put it in A tier. The dangers were a part of multiple different strategies and they always were crazy. Uh, we're hitting a trend here. Um, look, Burning Abyss. I don't think there's an argument to be made that this is an S tier. On release, it was insane and it lasted forever. And then it came back and it's been a part of a couple of different top cuts in the past couple of years as well. Uh, so Burning Abyss, as much as I don't like it, it is an S tier. Cosmos, during its time, was an S tier strategy. It was near tier zero. It was insanely powerful. Dark Destroyer is a hell of a card. I don't think that there's an argument that Cosmos is not S tier. It is that powerful. Gold Pride, Gold Pride is so cool but it doesn't, it hasn't done anything, and I think we have to put it into C tier. It's super cool, it works really, really well with things like Psychic End Punisher, uh, and it also works really, really well with Punk, but unfortunately, it just, it, it, it's been out a while and it doesn't see anything. Libromancers. And we're on. Mimigool. Mimigool has had top, uh, it has seen the top, uh, at a YCS. However, I think I'm going to put it in B for now. Although it's a very cool strategy, and it does a lot of really neat things, 
It is unfortunately hindered by the flip effect mechanic a little bit, uh, and has some real issues. It's unfortunate, because I think Mimigool is really cool. Dream Mirrors. Dream Mirrors are so... They're so complicated with absolutely zero payoff. I feel like Dream Mirrors being a D tier is not only expected, but it's also, I think, the largest TCG exclusive archetype. Like, there's so many cards for Dream Mirror. And I, to this day, don't really know what its goal is. Um... It's super neat. The artwork is fantastic, but it's just not a great strategy. Fish! Also known as Goaty. Uh, Goaty, I don't like that I have to put it here. The only time I've seen it have any success is when it's paired with something like Runic, and it's just meh. It's a neat strategy. I think it's got some real potential, but right now it's just not super good. My Mutant. There's going to be a lot of D tier. Um, my Uten is just... It is hindered by the fact that it does it's missing something. Something about my Uten is just not there. It's a super cool strategy. It's got really, really neat ways of play. But it's just not that good. Um, I don't know what else to say. Noble Knights. Wait a minute, are you ready? Same place. Noble Knights hasn't done anything. It can't accomplish it. Alright, finally, we're getting an A tier. Uh, so, Plunder Patrol is definitely A tier. It has gotten tops, but it hasn't done anything like these top three decks have done. I do think, however, it is better than Kaiju's because its mechanic is so unique and so advantageous. I think Plunder Patrol is one of the best in terms of long-standing capabilities in TCG exclusives. And is incredibly fun to play. Spirals. Okay, hold on. I don't think there's any argument here. That that's the order from best to worst. Spiral is the best TCG exclusive archetype we've ever had. And it's not particularly close. That deck was insane. Yes, it took an OCG card and import to make it tier 0. But it was tier 0 for a long while. And it's come back into a second format in uh, the Shadal Invoked format. Uh, Pre-COVID format. So, yeah. Spiral is super good. Subterror. Yes, that is a TCG exclusive archetype. Is an A tier. Um, I do think it's better than the Kaijus. But it, uh, I don't think it's as strong as Plunder. Subterror is very, very fun. It's very strong. Uh, again, its biggest hindrance for like things that would keep it back are it's the, a flip effect deck. So, like, this is where Mimigool hopes to be, but I think Mimigool actually has a chance of overtaking it with its second wave of support. Time Thieves. Now, Redoer is an A-tier card. I think it's a C-tier deck. I think it's got some real capable... Like, it's capable. There are things that it does that uh, make it better than the five decks in D-tier, but I don't think it cracks into the, the B or A or S-tier. Um, it's a very fun strategy, but it's limiting. Vendreds. Vendreds have some very powerful cards. They're better than Noble Knights. Um, look, we're going to put War Rocks in here too. We're not even going to like play this game. Yeah, War Rocks and Vendreds are just objectively bad. I don't have another way to put it. Uh, these... These are the 21 exclusive archetypes to the TCG. Uh, yeah, so recap real quick. Yes, we have four S-tier decks. That's a lot more than I would have wanted. Um, you could make the argument to put the dangers into A-tier because they were more as a supplementary engine. And you know what? I kind of agree with that. I think the, Ki I think the supplemental engine decks, which would be Kaijus and uh, dangers, going here makes sense. Um, I think the B-tier is correct. The S-tier is objective there i don't like ba for example cosmo is super cool because it's star wars themed and uh, i spirals is i don't know james bond i guess i have no idea but i don't think it's really arguable you can make the argument to move the fa and, and and ua down to d but you can't make an argument to move any of these up really i think these are really fair um i am going to move dangers down to a tier looking at it objectively so our s tier decks are spiral burning abyss and cosmos for A tier, we have Plunder Patrol, Subterror, Kaiju, 
a danger. In the B tier, we have B Trooper, which is fitting, because alliteration is a thing. Ashen, and uh, Mimigool. And then in C tier, we have FA, UA, of course, they're together again. Uh, Gold Pride, and Time Thief. And finally, in D tier, which is the Loaded tier, we have Libromancer, Dream Mirror, Goaty, Myutant, Warrock, Vendred, and Noble Knights. These are my opinions. If you like it, let me know. If you change anything, give me your reasoning in the comment section down below. Uh, I think this is pretty fair and objective. If you, Again, if you'd like to see my personal take on favorite archetype, like favorites in them, uh, ranking them from first to last, let me know by liking this video. If we hit 20 likes, I will do a top 21 where I list in order from worst to best in my opinion of card art and things like that the ones i like the most to the least let me know by hitting that like button subscribe if you haven't already and until next time lads good fun have luck <laughs>